you're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. More Frigidaires serve in more American homes than any other refrigerator. And now Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. The other tenants in the same building, of course, know very little about Ken. That's the way it is in a New York apartment house. But there are other people who do know, and some of them have rung the door buzzer and been admitted to Ken's lodgings. Sometimes the caller has been an old friend, and other times it's been Pagan Zellschmidt. But you don't understand, Mr. Thurston. Why should I come here at one o'clock in the morning if I didn't have a good reason? I don't know, Pagan. The last time you wanted to borrow ten bucks. But this is serious. By morning, I may be a dead man. Maybe soon, if you don't get out of here. Let me get back to bed. Yeah. I bet you wouldn't talk like this if, if you would see the ghost of your old dear friend, Jose Martinez. I haven't got any old dear friend, Jose Martinez. Neither have I anymore. He got drowned on the ship, the Papago. The one that hit a mine and blowed up. Papago? About six months ago. Yeah. I want him not to go around making like a sailor. Wait. You saw this man tonight alive? Well, not alive exactly. He's a ghost. And when I came to, somebody was throwing cold water over me. Just take a look at the shirt. I haven't been able to get much information, Chief. It seems that Papago is here to floating mine somewhere near the Azores and sank with all hands. The only wreckage found was mostly deck stuff couple of lifeboats. What cargo was she carrying, Ken? One that gives us plenty of reason to come in on the case. Medical supplies for Greece. Well, that's reason enough, all right. Only, what makes you think there is a case? Chief, the fact that Pagon saw a crew member of that freighter here in New York last night when everybody on board supposedly drowned. Looks a little screwy, doesn't it? Well, if Pagon really did see the man. Uh, who owned that ship, Ken? Some little layout called the Jordan Transportation Company. Offices of Los Angeles Harbor in San Pedro. They own a sister ship, the Pima. Supposed to be loading out there now for a run to the South China coast. But suppose the Papago did strike a drifting mine. Several boats have done the same thing since the war. Where's any case in that? Medical supplies are pretty good items on the European black market. But how can you sell anything on the black market when it's already sunk I in the ocean? I don't know. Maybe the same way a dead man can walk down the street six months later. Chief, I'm going to San Pedro. simply don't know too much about that Jordan setup. Well, how come, Dave? I thought you boys in the harbor police would know if anybody did. Well, as far as I know, they've never been tied up with anything crooked, so... Who's in charge of their office here in San Pedro? A fellow by the name of Myron Sharp. Sharp. And the name we have listed as owner of the company is E. Jordan. Likes to eat at the Casa de Seville in Santa Barbara. That's a very fine restaurant about 100 miles up the coast. Oh, yeah, I know the Casa de Seville. Used to go to Santa Barbara on vacation. Vacation, eh? Ah, uh, why don't we go up there for a week right now, Mr. Thurston? Quiet, eh? Pagon, shut up. Uh, you see, uh, as far as we've known, Ken, the Jordan Company is a small layout, operating a couple of freighters out of various ports. Only one now, Dave. They lost the Papago six months ago. Ah, uh, yes, I know about that. But they bought another ship about six weeks afterward, called the South Wave. Huh? Left here just last month on a South American run. South Wave, eh? Dave, when's the Pima scheduled to sail? In four days, if they get done loading. Mm -hmm. See, Mr. Thurston? We got time for a short trip to Santa Barbara. And that's exactly where I'm going. Good. I'll get ready right away. You buy yourself a pair of dungarees. You're going to stay here and try to get a job at the Jordan Company. 
But why should I want a job? I don't even know anybody here in San Pedro. Oh, you might run across an old friend around the docks. Jose Martinez, for instance. Say, I might have that. I always did like Jose. Hey, he's dead. Oh, no. It's good to have you with us again. How long are you planning to stay again? Not long enough, Pete. I'm not on vacation this time. I'm looking for somebody. Well, now, I'm sure none of the patrons here at the Casa de Sevilla could possibly... Oh, no, have... no, no, nothing of that sort. This guy is the owner of a shipping company in San Pedro. Let's see, the name, uh, E. Jordan. Jordan? Oh, yes, yes. Come on into the lounge, Ken. I'll introduce you. You've, uh, you've never met this guy, huh? No, I just got the name from the harbor police in San Pedro. Oh, I see. Over this way. Excuse me, Mother George. Oh? Oh. I'd like to present an old friend, Ken Thurston. Mother Jordan, Ken. How do you do? Oh, hey. See you later, huh? Yes, Pete, yes. Sorry to break in on your piano playing, Mother Jordan. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Thurston. I just do it to make the time go faster. Did you want to see me about something special? Well, yes, I was told in St. Pedro that you own the Jordan Transportation Company. Oh, dear. I'm afraid you've had a trip all the way up here for nothing. You see, I just leave everything to Mr. Sharp down in San Pedro. He's an awfully nice boy, and I'm sure uh, you... Yes, I understood Mr. Sharp was your manager, but I thought I'd better talk to you about this first. Well, I, I'm afraid you think I'm not even very intelligent. You see, I only inherited the business from my... Well, my dear husband passed away last year. Oh, then it's Mr. Sharp who really runs the company. Yes, and I was awfully lucky to get him. He's always so nice, so polite. I'm sure he'll be able to take care of you. Yes. Yeah. Mother Jordan, have you ever thought somebody in the company might be doing something, uh, well, underhanded? Why, Mr. Thurston, what a thing to say. Why don't you and I go down there together, straighten things out? Well, now I would enjoy the trip. Only, young man, don't you dare go down to San Pedro and start a fight with anybody. Mother Jordan, I don't have the slightest intention of starting a fight, not the slightest. As far as I can see, Mr. Thurston, the whole idea is ridiculous. We lost the Papago through an accident, but that's no indication that Peba will run into any danger on this China trip. I don't know, Mr. Sharp. They've reported drifting mines north of the Philippines. Ah, I've been drifting mines all over the world since the war, Mr. Thurston. Several ships have been sunk by them. That's right, Captain Blake. But I doubt if any of the crewmen who drowned on the others ever turned up alive later. I've shown you the crew log of the Papago, Mr. Thurston. There were no Jose Martinez on board. Well, you could have signed on with another name. Oh, that doesn't it's make any sense. Gentlemen, please. At least Mr. Thurston is being nice and polite about it. Uh, sorry, Mother Jordan. Yeah, well, I guess I'll go on board. About my bedtime. When's the Pima scheduled to sail? Friday, if everything works. No, he'll... It'll be before midnight Thursday or, or else on Saturday. Oh? I start no voyage on Friday. Superstitious, Captain Blake? Uh, <laughs> I'll see you in the morning, Myron. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Glad to have met you. Thank you. Oh, he's an awfully nice man. So strong and everything. He'd been with the company a long time? This is his uh, first trip. He was in the China coast trade. I see. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll just go on up to my room. You see, Mr. Thurston, my dear husband built a little apartment up over the office here, and I have some knitting I must work on. Good night, all. Good night, Mr. Mm. Jordan. Oh, you uh, find a quite a trusting employer, don't you, Mr. Sharp? And just what do you mean by that? Nothing may be true, isn't it, though? Anyway, I... Wait. Mr. Sharp! Sharp, I was... Mr. Thurston. What's wrong, Pagan? What's wrong? If you only knew what I just saw out there on the deck of that ship. Oh, I know, all right. Jose Martinez, or his ghost. He's up here on the foredeck someplace, Mr. Thurston. Oh, well, he could be any place by now, Pagon. I wanted to get away from Sharp. You any trouble getting a job? No. 
The sharp guy said no chance. But I ran into Captain Blake when I was leaving it, and he put me on. I'm a deckhand, whatever that is. Good. Now, what you find out? That that little storeroom next to the bridge is packed full of dynamite cases. Oh, so that's it. That's where I was when I saw the ghost of Jose's. Mr. Rex, it looked just like... What was that? What I don't was know. That? It's on the other side of the deck cabin. Come on. I don't really care about finding out what it was, Mr. Rex. Yeah, give me that flashlight. Hmm. Nobody in sight. Well, in that case, why don't we get out of here? Look out. That hatch is open right behind you. Huh? Say, say somebody could very easily fall down. Look. Hmm. Looks like a dead man lying down there. Dead man? Dead nothing, Mr. X. It's been dead for six months. That's that ghost of Jose Martinez. Now to continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. The freighter Papago struck a drifting mine and sank with all hands. But six months later, Jose Martinez, who'd been one of her crew, showed up in New York, alive. And now the trail has led Ken and Pagan to the dark hold of the Papago sister ship, the freighter Pima, lying out of wharf in San Pedro, California. They're bending over the body of a man who is dying for the second time, Jose Martinez. Easy, Pagan. Lift his head up. He's in bad shape. Blake. Captain Blake. Look, Mr. Thurston. He's been stabbed in the back. Yeah. Jose, what about Blake? Blake. What about Captain Blake? He, he'll talk. Scared. Huh? Get Blake. Ah. Mr. Thurston. Oh. Yeah, Pagan. If you meet him again now, he will be a ghost. That reminds me, he looks as solid as anybody. I don't see how he Shh, could... quiet. Huh? Yeah, Pagan, he must have been dead for five or ten minutes. Too bad he won't huh? be able to talk. Uh, I don't uh, no, no, no. you, Mr. Thurston? What's trouble, anyway? Captain Blake. Looks as if somebody knocked off one of your crew, Jose Martinez. Huh? Well, that's, that's not Martinez. It, it's a seaman named Tony Zork. Uh-huh. Come on, Pagan. Better not leave the dock, Captain Blake. And the same goes for Sharp if you can find him. What's that? Now, wait a minute. Where are we going, Mr. Thurston? A couple of places. And Pago, we've got to move fast. Oh, sure, Ken. The South Wave lay over there at the Jordan Wharf for ten days or so. I saw her quite a number of times. Good. What does she look like, Dave? I mean, in a general way, the overall outline. Oh, I don't know. About the same size and shape as the Pima. She mm -hmm. had a cleaner deck line, though. No after cabin, no superstructure above the bridge level. In other words, if you took those items off the Pima, she'd look pretty much like the South Wave, huh? Sure, but I don't... Wait a minute. Papago was a sister ship of the Pima. Right, and... Dave. And the Jordan Company supposedly bought the South Wave six weeks after the Papago supposedly sank. Yeah, but how could they change it over that way at sea? Well, you could do a pretty fast, clean job of cutting steel with dynamite, if you know how. Where do they claim they bought the South Wave? Well, now, let me see. According to our registry from the Cochin Saigon Line of Shanghai. Logs and papers all in order. A company on the China coast, eh? Hmm. Dave, I think I'd better make a phone call. <laughs> Chief. There is a Cochin Saigon line in Shanghai, and they did own a freighter called the South Wave. Sold it two years ago. Who bought it? The Canton Steel Company. They broke it up for scrap. Scrap? What about Blake? Well, the Captain Blake was discharged by the Cochin Saigon line a year and a half ago, embezzling ship's funds. They don't know where he went. As for that Yangtze River business, you were right. All right. Thanks a lot, Chief. 
I'll let you know what happens. Yeah, but Ken, I don't... So long, Chief. In other words, you're telling me you didn't know that Tony Zork's real name was Jose Martinez. Is that it, Captain Blake? That's right, Mr. Thurston. I sure wouldn't sign a man on this ship if I knew he was going around under an assumed name. Uh, what makes you think any different? Didn't you work for the coach in Saigon Line once? Why, yeah, that's right. I. What was that? What do you mean? I, I thought I... Well, nothing, I guess. Mm -hmm. How'd you happen to leave the Shanghai Company? Well, I uh, got tired of the way that... What's wrong, Captain Blake? Look... There at the porthole. That face, it's Martinez. Oh, it's imagination. I don't see anything. Anyway, you uh, called him Tony Zork before. Uh, that's who I mean, Zork. Uh. It's gone now. Did you kill him? No. No, who did? No. I was here in my cab and I... There it is again. Jose, no! Can't you see him there at the porthole? Why should I? I don't have a guilty conscience. There... Oh, he... he's gone now. Mr. Thurston... What do you think he wants? Maybe he wants you to start talking. Oh, I've got nothing to say. Well, then you'll probably go right on seeing him. You going to talk? No. What is it you want to know? How did you fake the sinking of the Papago? What do you mean? Well, we blasted off some of the superstructure, threw it overboard. And we headed south out of the shipping lanes, and repainted the vessel, and changed her name to the South Wave. What happened to the cargo? I, uh, sold it on the black market at Marseille. Then we went back. What about the log and papers the South Wave was registered under? Forged? No, the, they were the real McCoy. I, I stole them from the coach in Saigon at the time they scrapped the ship. Uh, and I suppose the same deal was being planned for the Pima on this next trip. Yeah, that's right. We, we'd already started rumors about mines being seen north of the Philippines. Only this time we'd... Changed, have her name changed and sold her to some China Coast Company. You don't need papers for that. And these medical supplies would have ended up on the Shanghai black market. Instead of going to the people they were meant for. Well, what are you going to do, Mr. Thurston? I'm going to smash this thing wide open. Who planned all this anyway, Blake? Who'd you take your orders from? Well, I... Sharp! He takes his orders from me, Thurston. Well, Sharp. Nice looking gun you're carrying. Yes. Shoots nice, too. What happened to Pagon? You scared him off? No. Caught him out there on deck, shoving Martina's body up to the window. Huh? He's either knocked out or dead. So that was it. I thought it was his spirit. You superstitious fool. Thurston tricked you and you started right in shooting off your mouth. I can't take any more chances with you, Blake. No, no, wait. I won't talk. You can trust me. I'll be able to trust both of you in about 15 seconds. Did you kill Martinez, Mr. Sharp? That's right. Didn't want you to identify him. Now you can tell him hello for me. No, no! Oh, dear. I guess I must have hit him, Mr. Thurston. He fell down. You hit him, all right. Two shots right on the back of the head. Come on in, Mother Jordan. I heard the whole thing, and I simply can't understand it. He was always such a nice, polite young man. Oh, thank goodness my dear husband always made me carry this... Revolver in my knitting bag. Yeah. Pagan, are you all right? Uh, I, I wake up and find I'm asleep with a dead body. My head feels like a cantaloupe. Hey, hey what hit me anyhow? The late Myron Sharp hit you, Pagan. Hey, he's dead. You shot him, Mr. Thurston? No, Mother Jordan did that. You mean she could shoot somebody? Well, I had to, Mr. Zellschmidt. He oh. was going to kill these two gentlemen. Oh. That's right, Pagan. And then, too, he might have spilled the fact that she's the brains behind this racket. Well, why, Mr. Thurston, what a thing to say. Isn't it, though? Suppose you explain how Sharp could pull all these deals without the owner of the company finding out. Well, I told you my dear husband always took care of things. Your husband. He wouldn't have been a man named Bully Jordan, would he? Head of a pirate fleet on the Yangtze River back in... No, don't try it. Dave Taylor's right behind you. Harbor police. I'll take that gun. Oh. Thank you, Mrs. Jordan. Now, come on, let's go. You too, Blake. Come on. Just a moment, please. I think I'll need my knitting. 
Mr. X, when a nice, sweet-looking old lady like that turns out to be a dirty crook, oh, oh, ah, then, then I'm completely disillusioned. That's the trouble, Pierre You can't always tell by looking. There's a lot of things in this old world that look pretty good on the surface. But you have to go deeper. Sometimes you even have to think about them. And thinking isn't so tough once you get used to it. Why don't we do more of it? Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Ladies and gentlemen, America's production depends on steel, and steel depends on scrap metal. So please help increase the production of the things you need and help to keep employment high by collecting steel and scrap iron around your own home. Turn it into your local drive or call your local scrap dealer right away. Now, next week, our story is called A Ruby for Pearl. Well, it has to do with one of the smartest international rackets you ever heard of. As usual, the Belasque will be along as Pagan Zelschmidt. So join us, won't you, where next I return as the man called X. Good night. Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Les Crutchfield. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.